Lift your hands and worship Him. Your name. Lift your hands in your own words and open up your mouth. Bless the Lord with your own words from the depth of your soul. From the bottom of your heart, bless Him. Open your mouth and magnify Him. Bless His holy name. Call His name. Lift up your voice and give him praise. Magnify him. Come on, I can't hear you. Open your mouth and bless him. Worship is personal. It is based on the revelation. Now open up your mouth from the revelation that you have of him. Give him praise. Rabahata Bragoda Sudaba The Lord of hosts The King of glory Yahweh Sabbath Yahweh Sabbath The Lord Yahweh Sabbath Yahweh 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 Sabbath Yahweh 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 Let's declare 
Father, we reverence you tonight. We bless you. We truly honor you. We declare that you are God. We declare that you are King of Kings. We thank you for your presence. Thank you for your grace that is in this house. Thank you for the things that we have seen you do in our lives again and again. Awesome testimonies, proofs of your mighty hand. We bless you. We thank you because we have come tonight that you will add to us. That you will increase our edification. For your word declares that they go from strength to strength. Each one that appears in Zion. Thank you because you are taking us from strength to strength. From glory to glory. Blessed be your name. Can you lift your hands? I'm seeing something like a fountain. In the realm of the spirit that is about to burst. I see something like a fountain, like a well of water, and it's overflowing above its surface. And there are four people that the hand of God will rest upon. God is bringing you to the overflow. The overflow of his grace, the overflow of his anointing. Wherever you are now, let the hand of God touch you. I see at least four people. God is bringing you to the overflow. Father, let your hand rest upon them. Rest upon those ones. Let it be your season of the overflow. Of grace, of the anointing, of power like you have never seen before. Let it be so for you. Just help them. More than what you can contain in this season. Says the Spirit of the Lord. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Are we set for tonight? Did you come ready to receive? You will not leave this place the same. The hand of God will be mighty upon us today. God will be glorified. Just hug somebody by your left and right. Tell them you're welcome to New Matic. Now please take your seat in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I want to appreciate the worship team for such a powerful um, ministration. Amen. Amen. Please help me welcome a dear man of God, Reverend Heladi Michelia. Amen. Can you stand and let's honor him? for coming thank you so much sir please be seated thank you so much amen i was surprised when he walked in here so i think we'll start from him amen um reverend heladi michelia is the senior pastor of gateway christian center in the city of gombe amen <laughs> hallelujah he came in for a program in town and we've been in touch. I, I, I was thinking he should be resting by now because it's, it's been almost the whole week. Amen. But well, we are so glad to have you, sir. Thank you so much. Amen. I'm going to say a few things. Um, I'll call him to just greet us for a minute or two. Amen. But let me just say a few things about him. Even though I know he would not want me to say that. More than just a pastor, this is somebody that I discern in the spirit to be a voice 
from the northeast of Nigeria. Yes. Amen. And then um, I consider him one that God has saddled with the responsibility of being a gatekeeper to that city. There are pastors, there are apostles, there are prophets, there are teachers, there are evangelists, but then there are men of God who are gatekeepers. God gives them the authority over cities, over territories. These are people that may not be very much articulate on social media, but these are people whom God has given divine influence over the hearts of men. Amen. And he's a very humble man doing a very great work in the city of Gombe. Um, there's no way you talk about um, Pentecostal Christianity and the move of God in that city that you can't mention him. I was privileged to fellowship with them last year in December. I was in Gombe for a, a brief function and then I went for their service. And he was so humble that at the middle of his sermon, when he spotted where I was sitting, he honored me by bringing me to sit very close to him. Amen. You know, sir, somebody told me later that day that no pastor has ever come to the service and they brought him to sit there. <laughs> I said, yes, I came with a different grace. <laughs> Amen. But that tells you the level of humility and spiritual discernment by the grace of God, this is somebody who is way older than me in ministry. But you are able to discern, regardless of age, regardless of status, what a man carries. And if a man knows how to discern this on other people, it shows you his ranking in the realm of the spirit. Amen. So I want to bring him up for just a minute or two to just greet us and um, we'll continue with the service. So please help me. Put your hands together and let's go. Well, glory to God. Are there people in the house this evening? Well, let me hear a shout of victory. Amen. Well, I'm so glad to be here today, Apostle. Uh, of course, before we met, I've heard so much about you and I've longed for the opportunity to come and see what God is doing with and through you. Amen. And, uh, I'm truly glad to be here today. You know, the Bible says, whatsoever a man sows, he will reap. So that was how you sneaked into service without telling me. So me too, I sneaked back into your service without telling you. Amen. I bring you greetings from the city of Gombe. And I'm glad to see what God is doing in Medukuri. And doing it through you and through these great people. Can you put your hands together for the Lord one more time? Amen. I am glad to be in this building. The last time I saw this building, it was a bit smaller. And the land was a bit smaller also. I happen to have started my ministry here in Meduguri. And um, um, I was the vice president of PFN, GRA zone, where this church is. And uh, Baba uh, Oluagbana used to give us this place exactly where the Sunday school is for all of our meetings. So when I drove in this evening, to see the wonderful thing that God has done through all your troubles. I give God praise and glory for every one of you. Amen. So, I'm so glad to be here. Thank you, Apostle, for the opportunity to say hello. Please keep moving, keep doing the good work. You are heard everywhere upon the earth. Your testimony is going far. And please stand strong. And we stand together. And this is a man I believe that God is also raising for us in this part of the world. And really, it is the only reason why I came. I want to move with what God is, where God is, not with where God used to be. Bless you. 
Let's celebrate him one more time. Amen. Amen. Um, something just occurred to me now. Can you remain standing, please? Please, Reverend, I would want to beg you to come up again. I don't know if he will stay till the end. He's been preaching all week. He probably may leave before the service is over to go and rest. So, since God has privileged us to have him around, let's have him come and bless us from his heart. Yes, huh? even, even if it's just a word of prayer, okay? So, please, I want you to remain standing. Um, let's receive him again to just speak a word of blessing, a prophecy over us. God bless you. Thank you, sir. Take your beautiful seat in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. One more time, let's celebrate God's gift in this place, Reverend Teladi Michelia. Amen. Thank you, sir. We love you. We love you. It's truly, truly a great man. Truly a great man. What an honor to have him around. Amen. Thank you so much, sir. And I like the way he, he was just prophesying from a, a, a standpoint of, you know, it is settled. He didn't say the land will open. He said the land has opened. As though God told him the word for us this year. This is our year of rest. And you know, the Bible says, he that has entered into his rest has finished his works. So you, you begin to declare like God who calls those things that are not as though they were that means that the future is not where you are going the future is where you are now do you believe that thank you so much sir once again and we truly honor the team of people he came with god bless you thank you so much thank you thank you thank you very much let's get to the word amen we'll be looking at activating rest activating rest god gave us the word for this year that this is our year of rest round about bible says in second chronicles chapter 15 and in verse 15 that because they sought the lord with all their heart and their desire their soul he was found by them 
and the Lord gave them rest round about. The Lord gave them rest round about. I shared with us at the beginning of the year that there were six things that this rest round about or rest on every side means. There are six things that it, signific it signifies. Number one, it means all round satisfaction. When God satisfies you all round, in other words, when you experience completion, fullness on every aspect of your existence, spiritually, financially, mentally, physically, and in every other aspect. It also means enjoying divine peace at its zenith, one of the most expensive commodity in this world today. Maybe even the most expensive, peace. Are many rich people without peace but this is the year that God wants to give us peace at its zenith even in the midst of a storm that you walk in divine peace number three it means living in God's best how many of you want to live in that place the very best that God has to offer number four it means victory over situations and circumstances that speaks of a life that has conquered fear and anxieties. When you walk in the consciousness of the truth that God has given you victory. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 15, 57, Now thanks be to God who gives us the victory in Christ Jesus. In 1 John 5 verse 4 it says, Whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory of them that overcomes, even our faith. So faith is not a wish. Faith is not a risk. It is the victory. That victory puts you above circumstances and situations. Places you to being charged. Number five, rest roundabout means the realm of the prepared blessings. The prepared blessings. The Bible says... Thou preparest a table before me. This is one phenomena or phenomenon that fully describes rest roundabout. When God prepares a season of blessing and pushes you to enter into it, it brings you out of struggle, it brings you to a place of comfort. And then, number six, rest roundabout means spiritual refreshing and edification and so we've been trying to look at how we can activate all of these six forms of rest roundabout in every aspect of our life all through this year it is important that when God gives you a word you study and trust the Spirit of God to find out the means by which this word will find expression in other words the part that we have to play um, cooperating with God to bring to pass his word concerning us and so last week we were at the third part of our series activating rest we looked at the sustainable power of principles and I think I've spoken a lot about that I'm just doing a brief recap for those who probably are here for the first time or those who are watching online for the first time um, and I shared with us uh, some principles that we should work with that will activate the rest that God has promised us this year. Number one, I said the principle of intimacy with God. The principle of intimacy with God. You want to walk in rest roundabout. The very scripture I quoted when I started the recap just now in Second Chronicles 15 verse 15, the Bible says that they sought the Lord with the whole of their heart and with the whole of their soul. So the principle of intimacy is a very necessary principle that must be engaged by the believer to experience rest roundabout. Remember that principles are not opinions. They are fundamental laws. Things that you must walk in compliance with. You know, one of the ways by which God 
expresses or reveals his power is true intimacy true intimacy so when we seek the Lord with the whole of our heart when we make God our top priority when we make him the object of our pursuit and not things the Bible says in Jeremiah 29 in verse 13 he says you shall seek me and find me if you search for me with the whole of your heart with all your heart in another translation that means that it is when all of your heart is involved in a pursuit of God that you are guaranteed that you will apprehend God you know that's what Paul said in Philippians chapter 3 he says that I will apprehend what I was apprehended for when God becomes your goal when all of your heart seeks him a preacher once said that the prize for all of god is all of you so god has a system of checking if the completeness of your pursuit is him that means if we seek him not with the whole of our heart we may find something else that looks like him not him yes this explains why you see certain people pray fast study the word very attentive in church very engaged in kingdom practice and everything that you can think of that presents a man to look spiritual and he can score good points before men but before god no and then the benefits that should come with this level of seeking after god we don't see it find expression in the life of this individual it might be that this person is doing everything he or she is doing but not with the whole of his heart i remember one of the kings of judah i think he's the king amaziah or something the bible says he sought the lord not with the whole of his heart you see god you can't play games with god it's just the truth you can play games anywhere not with god the one who created the heart he says i the lord searched the heart that means that God will probe our motives when we truly desire him. What is your motive for seeking God? What are your intentions? Because as far as God is concerned, intentions is as good as actions. That's why the Bible says of the word of God in Hebrews chapter 4 verses 12 that it's a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. So if you want to enjoy rest roundabout, it must be a wholesome desire, a heartfelt desire to seek God, to want to know God. And I believe that you're being here this afternoon or you're watching online, that you devote time like this to be in the presence of God is one of the significance to the fact that you truly desire God and you're truly seeking Him with the whole of your heart. So the principle of intimacy with God it's one of the principles to engage this year that will bring us into the experience of rest roundabout. Number two, the principle of kingdom mindedness. Kingdom mindedness. When the concerns of the kingdom becomes your passion. When what bothers God bothers you. Kingdom mindedness. When your approach to life is with a mindset or a mentality of advancing the kingdom it affects the job that you do part time it affects the career that you choose you know those days they used to ask us in school and some of you went to very good schools where they used to have um, career day is that true if there was no career day in your school maybe you went to a government school say amen but it doesn't matter now look at you look at where God has brought you to uh -huh. So government or private, you are still better than yesterday. Aha, so thank God for that. So those days they will ask us, what do you want to become? And you know the answer. I want to be this. I want to be. And if you study very well, almost 80% of the people who said I wanted to be this or that did not become it. They ended up somewhere. Some said I wanted to be a doctor. They became engineers. Some said, I wanted, to be, be, uh, I wanted to be a banker. They are pastors now. Amen. 
Some said, I wanted to read law. I wanted to be a lawyer, a barrister. And then God called them into ministry. Amen. So it shows you that your ambition can and should be influenced by God's perfect will concerning you. So as you begin to seek God, God will begin to infuse in you a passion for his kingdom. A passion for his purpose concerning you. And then that mentality will drive you in every decision that you will make as it has to do with your life. Where you travel to part time. Where you stay part time. Everything that concerns you. And I believe that as young people, for many of us, if I say young people, I'm saying from 55 years down, you are young. Say amen. amen. In fact, a pastor said God called Abraham at 75. So, if you are lower than 75, you are <laughs> is that true? So, when we engage the principle of kingdom-mindedness, we'll experience rest round about. The Bible says in Job 36 verse 11, if they obey and serve him, they shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasure. If that scripture looks like what you desire in your life, then the principle is given there. If they obey and serve him. Remember the last temptation of the Lord Jesus Christ in the wilderness by the devil. Jesus' response to him was, Thou shalt worship the Lord your God. What was the temptation? He says, All these things have I will give to you all the glory of the world and all that the world contains if you will fall down and worship me. Was it not the same world that Jesus came to redeem? He would have just received it cheaply from Satan. Just fall down and worship him. There were no photographers to snap and put it on social media. Nobody will know. But Jesus said, Thou shalt worship the Lord your God and him only shalt thou serve. And so God wants to raise us as people who are passionate about kingdom service, who are passionate about kingdom advancement. Your life, your resources, your strength, your effort, everything about you is dedicated to the cause of the advancement of the kingdom. He says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and its righteousness. In other words, be aligned to the purposes of God's kingdom on earth. That's what it means by and its righteousness. Come in right standing. Bring your life to align. Don't force God to align with your own ambition. No. Everything about you should align with him. It should affect your relationship, your choice of a spouse, where you stay. We need to get to this level of dedication. And the Bible says, to that effect, all these things that the Gentiles chase after will be added to you. God did not create man to pursue money. God did not create man to pursue material things. There is a feeling of vanity that you will only experience when you devote your life to pursuing these things. And there's no need for you to experience it. Solomon has done it for us. Solomon said, everything my eyes desired, I got it. At the end of the day, he said, the whole duty of man is to fear God and keep his commandment. So if we want to see and experience this rest, we must engage the principle of kingdom mindedness. There's one scripture I want to read for you before I continue with the recap. In 2 Chronicles 14 verse 6 to 7. Very, very powerful scripture. And he built fortified cities in Judah for the land had rest. He had no war in those years because the Lord had given him rest. Verse 7 now. Therefore he said to Judah, the king now. Let us build these cities and make walls around them and towers, gates and bars while the land is yet before us because we have sought the Lord our God, we have sought him and he has given us rest on every side. If you read King James translation, it says rest round about. So they built and prosper. They built the city of God. They built the house of God and they prospered in it. They had rest because their passion was to see that God's house, God's city, Jerusalem that he treasured so much 
was built up. And I believe we can learn this principle from, from this instance. This is the year where you will see yourself deploying everything that you have and that you are to the advancement of God's kingdom. This is the year to raise the bar in your commitment to God and his kingdom. This is the year not to be in competition with anybody but yourself. Are you hearing what I'm saying? We are living in the last days. And Jesus said until this gospel is preached in all the world and a lot goes into play when the gospel must be preached. And so God is looking for men that will stand with him this year. You want to experience restaurant about work in keeping with the principle of kingdom mindedness. Number three, the principle of humility. The Bible says, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God and he will exalt you in due time. James chapter 4 verse 10 and 1 Peter chapter 5 verse 6. It says to humble yourself in the sight of the Lord because God gives grace to the humble but he resists the proud. And I explained to you last week what humble yourself means according to 1 Peter chapter 5 verse 6. You will read it in verse 7. He says that we should cast our cares upon him. So for God, the first expression of humility is a life of prayer. When you are able to cast all your cares and your burdens on God. That means that when we carry certain burdens about our lives on ourselves, before God, it looks like pride. Rest means drop the burden. Submit it to him. Allow him to care for you. Remember he said be anxious for nothing. God is so bothered about our mind. That he doesn't want you to entertain anxiety for any other thing apart from him. And to God that is humility. So we must be humble before him. Make him the object of our desire. Allow him to be concerned and to bother about the things that surrounds us. And then this humility will stretch into how we relate with people. The Bible says in Philippians 2 verse 3 to 4 that we should be in like mind towards one another. We should esteem the other person higher than us. The principle of humility. And then number four where we stopped last week was the principle of meditation which has to do with hearing from God or perceiving the minds of God. You see, it will take divine instructions. Remember, part one of activating rest is instructions, the power of instructions. The only way you can capture the instructions that will come from God that will pedestal you into walking in this rest that God has promised is that you are able to perceive the mind of God, you are able to hear from God. You are able to know what God is saying or what God is doing at the time. And so the principle of meditation is what helps you to harness your spiritual senses to be able to pick divine signals, to know what God is doing part time. And this principle, you deploy it in your everyday life, your everyday Christianity. And meditation is one of the most powerful habits that any Christian can form. The Bible says in Psalms 1 verse 2 and 3, But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in it doth he meditate day and night. Day and night. Day and night. Meditation simply means, you know, be mindful of the word of God. Or, let me use a very simple expression so we can understand. Meditation simply means, perusing on God's word in your mind until it produces visions or visual expressions. That's what it means. So you take the word of God and you begin to think about it and ponder about it until what you have read, what looks like is abstract, becomes a living expression, becomes a visual interface something you can relate with something you can deal with 
As a matter of fact, the word of God is meant to cast visions on your mind. What you read in the pages of your Bible are not abstract. They are real-time experiences. The Bible says the word of God is quick. The word quick there means living. It is alive. So it is in meditation you will experience the living power of the word of God. This is how you are able to see what God is saying. Habakkuk says, I will stand upon my watch and set me upon my tower and watch to see what he will say. You hear what is said if it is man that is speaking. But now you are able to see what is said. So you move from audio to audio visual because you practice the principle of meditation. You take, for instance, a prophetic word delivered to you and you begin to meditate on it on a daily basis. The first thing that will happen is you begin to see the graphic picture of what that word presents. Because in walking by faith, if you cannot see it, you cannot become it. Jesus said in Mark 11 verse 23 that whoever shall say to this mountain, be removed from here and cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart. The word heart there is also used with the word mind. Shall not doubt in his heart. You remember when, is it James now who said a double-minded man is unstable. So one part of you is seeing the graphic possibility of this word, but the other part of you is seeing the negative aspect. The Bible says you are double-minded. Your mind and your heart must agree on one picture. It takes meditation to arrive at that point. So one of the principles we must engage this year for you to capture what God is saying because every time God will do a miracle or every time God will reposition you in a season of your life, he does it through instructions. He gives you instructions. The Bible says in Acts chapter 10 in verse 19 that while Peter was meditating on the vision that he was shown, the Spirit of God spoke to him and said, three men are downstairs looking for you. He said, go down and follow them, doubting nothing. Remember that the vision Peter saw appeared to him three times. He was confused as to what it meant. But as he meditated on it, the Spirit of God gave clarity. Every time you sleep and wake up, some of you have realized that after a few minutes or probably a few hours, you may literally forget everything that you saw in the dream. Especially when you know that that dream contains a message that is needed. You need to engage the principle of meditation. Learn to ponder on it. In fact, there's something I do now. Apart from having a notepad by my bed, I put my, my tablet there. Once I have a dream and I wake up, I record it. I say it as I saw it and record it there. If somebody prays and speaks a word over my life, I record it. And then there are moments in my retreat every week where I play it and listen again till what I'm listening to becomes a vision that I can see. Because faith is the substance of things hoped for. The substance, you can touch it when you see it. If you've never seen it, you can never become it. Nobody arrives into success by luck because success is built on principles so meditation is visualizing a thing until you are caught up into its experience into its reality meditation casts a vision of God's word on your mind you know this was the secret of three people i will bring out in the bible before we move into the last two principles for today in genesis chapter 30 verse 37 to 43 and in chapter 31 verses 10 and 11 god gave jacob a dream and as jacob meditated on that dream he understood the wisdom god was trying to give him and it was when he applied that wisdom that he was able to shortchange Laban and he went from being broke to being very prosperous. Remember his deal with Laban, his uncle. 
after serving him for many years, Laban said, okay, what will I give you? I don't want you to leave me broke. He said, okay, you will take the speckled and the strict animals for yourself, Jacob. Then me, I will take the clean ones. You know, Laban was very smart. It was very And his deception didn't start today. If you read Genesis 24, when Abraham sent Eliezer, his servant, and Eliezer arrived at the city, you remember the interaction between him and Rebekah. And when he's with Rebekah, you know, watered all his camels and all of that, he gave Rebekah a gift, a gold ring and a gold bangle. The Bible says, if you read it there very well, that when Rebekah rushed to the house to tell them what transpired between she and Eliezer, the Bible says that when Laban saw the gold, he ran there. Is it not easy for you to just say, okay, go and call the man and come? No. He said, me, I want, I want the share. I want my share. So Laban was very smart and it's not today. So Jacob knew he was going to be in trouble because even in his world of being a trickster, of being a deceiver, he deceived Esau. He met a grand master of deception. So when Laban said, okay, you take the speckled and the strict animals, Laban knew that at that time they were not producing, the animals were not producing speckled or streak. So what he was saying is, I will see the one you will take. And then God gave Jacob a dream. And as he meditated on it, he saw the technology, the spiritual technology there. And when he applied it ten times, all of them produced speckled animals. How about Hagar? In Genesis chapter 21, in verse 19, Hagar and Ishmael would have died of thirst but the Bible says God opened her eyes and she saw it's a meditation that God opens your eyes to see you need to spend time to meditate on the word meditate on the word that God gave you concerning your future concerning your ministry concerning your business now you have done everything God has asked you to do and you have seen the hand of God but it looks like you are at an end now you don't know what to do from that end meditate and you will realize by the wisdom of God deployed to you that if you add B to end, it becomes bend. So what you think is an end is actually the big, is another beginning. You know that revelation is progressive. God will not, you will not understand everything God shows you per time. One vision can suffice for 15 years, phase by phase. In Acts chapter 26, Paul said it when Jesus appeared to him. He said, and the things which I will show you. And you know, the reason is so that you will always go back to seek him. You know, God is a wonderful God. If he gives you everything, he knows, you will tell him bye-bye. We'll meet at the rapture. So he has you always coming back. It's like a, an app you download. And just when you think you can use the app online or offline, as you put it on, they say you must put on data here uh -huh. so meditation it was in meditation that God showed Moses a secret in Exodus chapter 15 25 that turned bitter waters to become sweet that means in, in this year when people are experiencing hardship just the way God opened the eyes of Moses God will open somebody's eyes in meditation and the very thing that people are suffering from is what you will leverage on to rise is it not the same waters that destroyed the whole earth that elevated the, the ark of Noah? So in the midst of scarcity, God will show you opportunity. Yes. Businessman, meditate. Now that God has blessed you, set a good office for yourself. Soundproof it where there is no noise so you can meditate. That's the wisdom that will take your company from where you are now. Having just 20 staff to 200 staff to 1,000 staff. Sometimes God will give me messages for three, four, five weeks. Say, so go and preach these ones. And then when I'm getting to the end, I know that there's nothing else. It's not like there's nothing to preach. No, Haba. When you study the word of God again and again, you can preach all from almost anywhere. But you see, if you don't want to be a preaching machine, because you can preach and excite people with the eloquence of your words, but if there is no life in it, you can't transform people. It's not eloquence that transforms people, no. It's not the completeness of my English now that is touching you in your spirit, no. 
is the quantity of life that it carries. So when I see that I'm getting to the end, I know I, I need to go back and begin to retreat. And then that season, I'm meditating almost always. Everything that passes around me, I'm trying to look at it closely. And God gives messages in strange moments. You are in front of a microwave trying to warm up something to eat and God will just give you a message and say, go and share this. May God give us the grace to practice this principle. In the name of Jesus. Two more and we are done for the day. Principle number five. The principle of abundance. 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 How many of you want to walk in abundance this year? <laughs> it will be your story this year. Abundance. You know there are four stages of the welfare of every man. There are four stages that the welfare of any man can be characterized with. There is lack or scarcity which is stage one. May that not be your portion in Jesus name. Yeah. It's like you, you, you want to experience lack. That's why he didn't say amen. Don't pray to experience it too. Somebody said, when you are poor, you and sin will be sharing fence. <laughs> you have sin as your next door neighbor. He'll be coming to give you ideas. How many of you have been there before? Okay. So stage one is scarcity or lack. Stage two is comfort. Now you have enough for your basic needs. Stage three is luxury. You have more than enough that you can spread around. And don't apologize to anybody when God brings you to that realm. You know, I was telling somebody that, you see, the mindset of poverty, I, I believe, is stronger than the spirit of poverty. Yes. The spirit can be casted out. But the mindset, it may take years to live. That's why somebody is a millionaire and the last time he changed his wardrobe was two years ago. That's the mindset of poverty. Because he's still living two years ago that he feels he's not worthy of affording good clothes for himself. In fact, there are some people, let me attack some people here. Well, you came for service, so allow me to. Uh -huh. See, I've forgotten what I wanted to say now. <laughs> Some people so love their stomach that money that they should use to make life comfortable around them is only belly. Is that true? So the person can still be wearing jeans that has torn. You know, some jeans were not meant to be torn. But when you wear the life out of that jeans and it moves from life to death, not from death to life, it will start becoming ripped jeans. You give somebody money, say, go and buy shoe. The person will go and buy yam and put in the house. That is just, that is the mindset of poverty. The mindset of poverty, because poverty is meant to devalue the worth of a human being. Listen to our message last year on financial dominion. I defined poverty and I, I did a lot of, you know, exposition about world research on poverty. Nigeria, in fact, two days ago I checked it. Nigeria is still among the top 10 poor nations. Mysteriously, Christians are prospering. <laughs> Isn't it? Because of these principles. So poverty devalues a man. It makes you feel you are not worthy of the good things of life. So God has blessed this guy now. He has enough money to go to a boutique and get some good clothes and be presentable. God has invested a great portion of his spirit in you. You are anointed. You are intelligent. You have what it takes to change society. What is in you is, should, be, should be placed on high demand.
by kings and nobles but the truth is your appearance will determine if they will value you enough to receive what is inside of you even joseph when they sent for him he had to go and shave and change his wardrobe meanwhile don't go and buy clothes when there is no content that's the, the that's the fig tree phenomenon Jesus went to the fig tree and he felt that it had fruit only for him to discover there was no fruit so don't say hey, apostle say let's package then you you now you that you are earning 30,000 you now go and buy 25,000 with one <laughs> principle of what <laughs> foolishness Your income is 40,000 and you are buying a phone of 200,000. Yeah. Say, Apostle, I need the camera now. What, who does? Who would that camera snap? <laughs> eh? It's not the, it's not the uh, resolution of your camera that determines your worth and influence, influence in society. Oh. It's your content. You can snap with an iPhone of 1 million and nobody will like your picture there <laughs> amen uh -huh. and then the fourth i said there is stage one is scarcity comfort stage two luxury and stage four extravagance so these two ends extravagance and scarcity should not be the dream of any believer the principle of abundance Luke chapter 6 verse 38 I try to be as simple as possible so everybody can understand those of you outside I hope you are following it says give and it will be given to you let's read together the count of three one two three give just stop there that's before we go further just stop there let's bring the message from there first let's read again one two go for the last time one two go give so why didn't you give today huh let me continue good measure pressed down shaking together yet running over will be put in your bosom how many of you want to experience this this is the overflow of blessings for with the same measure that you use it will be measured back to you i think it is second corinthians 9 verse 6 that says he that sows sparingly shall reap sparingly and he that sows bountifully shall reap so your harvest is determined by your seed and when we talk about seed i'm not just talking about finances alone seed is the beginning of anything and god is saying that the end is determined by the beginning in genesis 8 22 it says while the earth remains seed time and harvest notice it didn't say harvest time seed time so the harvest is determined by the timing of the seed shall not cease as far as the earth remains this is a principle that as long as we are on this earth this principle will keep working and i thank god because this particular principle is not religious in march or maybe april i want to share with you something god taught me in 2018 the seven indomitable laws of kingdom greatness universal laws and when we expound on them you you now realize why certain unbelievers are riding on horses and believers are trekking you see god is so a god of integrity that he has put forth these principles you just comply with them and see what he does it is non-negotiable it is as automatic as anything you can imagine give and it shall be given unto you. Psalms 126 verse 5 to 6. It says those who sow in tears will reap in joy. He that goeth forth weeping, bearing precious seed, shall doubtless return again rejoicing. 
bringing in the sheaves. That means that every season of the seed is not always a pleasurable season. The season when you need to sow or to invest is not always pleasurable because you would have to part with something to secure a desired future. It's the principle of abundance. You say, for with the same measure that you give, that means if you want to increase the level of abundance you experience in an aspect of your life, I hope you know that God is inexhaustible. As far as his blessings are concerned, God is inexhaustible. In fact, the Bible says his ways are past finding out. So you will determine the rise. You will determine the level of increase. God has made his provisions for us so uh, um, elastic that it can stretch to any limit you are the one that will determine the limit based on your compliance with his principle so if i want to see god increase me in the anointing then i need to deploy more time with him and if i feel that i'm too busy to give more time to god then forget about increasing in the anointing the bible says they go from strength to strength each one that appears for God, not in a club, not in a restaurant. That means intimacy in the kingdom is the seed for greatness. You want to increase in your finances, check your giving. It's time to increase it. This is such that when you do or when you comply with this principle, you will not need to pray and say, Father, bless me. No, no. He said, give and it shall be given. Some of you, your offering last year has not changed. And yet you say you entered a new year. Some of us, your offering five years ago has not changed. Some of us are so spiritual, but when it comes to deploying this principle in our finance, you return back to Okoro of three years ago. When it's time for offering, you just bring out anything squeezed in your pocket. In fact, the manner in which we give, self, you can study the manner in which we give and determine if we are really knowledgeable about this principle. Say so the demons of poverty now are shaking because it's not in Nigeria. I know in the north here is our problem, but we'll shake that demon out today. In Ecclesiastes chapter 11 verse 1 to 6. I believe in my studies this scripture best describes the principle of abundance. It says cast your bread upon the waters. For you will find it after many days. Somebody say many days. Many days. I will draw something from that scripture. But let's continue. It says give a seven to a seven, to seven and also to eight. For you do not know what evil will be on the earth. He said, if the clouds are full of rain, they empty themselves upon the earth. And if a tree falls to the south or the north, in the place where the tree falls, there, there it shall lie. Verse 4 is now the expression. Verse 4 and 5 is now the explanation of verse 2. He said, he who observes the wind will not sow. In other words, if you look at the economy, you will not give. It's enough not to give. Abi? And I don't know when it will get better. Let me tell you the truth. Financial hardship is a scriptural phenomenon that cannot be averted globally, but can be avoided personally. Are you hearing what I'm saying? He said, though darkness covered the earth and gross darkness the people. Go and check. I prophesied to you the first Sunday. I told you I saw stock exchange and I saw the charts going down. Check the stock exchange report of this week that we just finished. You will see losses. Are you hearing what I'm saying? He that observed the wind will not sow. He that observed his pocket will not so he that observed the suit of his pastor and feels that pastor is richer than us will not well, talk to me now not on us 
Sir, to, when I left Gombe on Monday, I met one of your members at the airport in Abuja. So ah, he came and greeted me and all of that. I said, oh, that's great, that's great. From where we were at the conveyor belt till we parted ways at the door, I started preaching to him. I don't know, I didn't get his name, but I know he will know me somehow. Maybe one day when I come <laughs> to Gombe, I told him, I said, you see your pastor, there are very few of his kinds in this nation. Take care of him. This money you are making now, begin to share it. Yes, sir, I did it. Because pastor will not do it. I know, I know him. I've, I've, been, I've been studying about him for a long time. He's a man of integrity. You know, there are believers like that. Like Judas. Why this waste? And the Bible says he didn't say it because it was really a waste. Or he wanted to give the poor. But so that he can be fapping from the pocket. This Gen Z, you don't know fapping, right? Okay. How many of you know that word? Ah, you, maybe you stayed, you stayed in Lagos or you stayed somewhere. Uh -huh. What do they call it now? Kolobi? No, that one is greedy stealing. I'm talking about the stealing that is just one, once, once. Nobody will know. Uh -huh. You can take 20 spoons from the pot and shake the pot good measure shaking together <laughs> nobody will know you shake it very well and level it level it level you know some of you your civil engineering started from <laughs> i don't know why you're not an engineer now you, you <laughs> hallelujah let's go back to that scripture ecclesiastes say he who observes the wind or not so and he who regards the cloud will not reap. As you do not know what is the way of the wind or how the bones grow in the womb of her who is with child, so you do not know the works of God who makes everything. And then verse 6, summary of everything. He said, therefore, in the morning, sow your seed. And in the evening, do not withhold your hand. That means if you have given, give again. This is the principle of abundance. You don't get tired of it. Oh, the one that I gave, I've not seen the harvest. Abba. The Bible says, For you do not know which will prosper, either this or that, or all together. When you see the Bible describe what we call bumper harvest, what do you think it means? It means a mountain of seed. He kept giving and giving and giving and giving. That's the reason why the Bible says, cast your bread upon many waters. And after many days, when you engage this principle, it's not every time that it comes in automatic. Some of you, for the, in the last 10 years, that's how you are still living with God. That's why you have not grown beyond where you are. Your calculation is always around your salary. You have, how, when was the last time you saw the miraculous in finances. And you have to believe it is real. Because the Bible says the spirit of the Lord is upon me for the Lord has anointed me. The first mission for the anointing is to preach the gospel to the poor. Somebody say hey, spiritual poverty. It also means financial poverty. Because Jesus multiplied five loaves and fed 5,000 people. It's good to work, it's good to labor, it is good to do business or anything. But be all that is just the face. You know, if EFCC is probing somebody, uh, maybe they are investigating you for money laundry or tax evasion or anything. They will study your business enterprise, your income, what comes in, um, your tax. Have you evaded tax? Are you tax compliant, all of those things. They are trying to just put everything about you into fact that this serious money that you have and you are, you, are, you are putting on social media is legitimate. Let me tell you the truth. The reason why you work is so that EFCC will not catch you. Because God can truly bless a man beyond his work. Just because you have not seen it doesn't mean it's not real. Forget about what bloggers are saying. There are some of us that have practiced it and we have seen it. He said, in the morning, sow your seed. 
in the evening do not withhold your hand that's the principle that brings you into abundance there are three things I will share with us under this principle of abundance that you need to take note of especially as it has to do with your finances the principle of abundance number one in the face of abundance be frugal be frugal f-r-u-g-a-l it means spend wisely it also means delay your present gratification you see when you begin to practice this law of giving you begin to see the hand of God around your life after a while so you begin to experience abundance now this is the wisdom that will help you manage the abundance that is coming because if it is wasted you have cut off the flow remember that I taught you that we are God's stewards a steward is a manager so first thing first is that you must live in the face of abundance be frugal that you have it doesn't mean you can afford it there are some gratifications that you should enjoy now that you can delay are you hearing what i'm saying delay it for a greater good this one that is coming now see how you can invest more of it knowing that this principle genuinely walks you into abundance so you practiced it and then you arrived at 1.5 million and you feel that this is the time to buy a car if you buy a car of 1.5 million what's the lifespan of that car under the current rate is a car important to a level it is but be frugal at that that season of your life see how you can invest that money and then allow it to grow till maybe you have between three to five million and afford a very good car that will last you not the one that they dedicate on sunday and on Tuesday, the tire is out. <laughs> Your pastor must love you to dedicate that kind of car. Hmm? You know, some of us are so smart. The engine is bad, everything. You just go and spray the car and everything. It's looking so good. God is good. He has done me well. Oh, my soul. <laughs> Let's see how long you sing that song. <laughs> Be frugal. Be frugal. Be frugal. One of my mentors told me, he said, live 10 steps below your true worth. That you have it doesn't mean you can afford it. Number two, still under this principle of abundance, I'm giving you the wisdom to manage the abundance that will come as a result of your compliance to this law. Number two, Learn to make wise financial decisions. Learn to make wise financial decisions. So surrender yourself to teachers, to mentor you around finances, around investments, around businesses. So that the abundance that is coming can be properly deployed and enjoyed and sustained. Remember, we are dealing with the sustainable power of principles. And then number three, live a life of patience. Live a life of patience. Both patience in practicing the principle of giving, which brings you into abundance, and also patience in affording certain things around your life. Patience. Patience. Patience, particularly in giving. Patience. Many of us are not patient. That's why we are afraid of that law of giving. We are afraid of that principle. Sometimes you need to understand that the Bible said, seed time and harvest. Wait. In fact, I discovered that God would delay the abundance sometimes when he checks to see that the wisdom to manage it is not there. 
Yeah. He will delay it. You, you think you are smart. You already know what to do. God who created you knows better. Now, five million is about to hit you from that business you invested in. Or maybe you, you dropped a sacrifice at the beginning of the year and you were expecting that the very next day, heaven will just tear open and millions will be falling. Calm down. I told you the first time I gave one million to God. Eh? Nothing came back that month. Oh. Well, I didn't finish the story. It's, you like the part of the story where the, the money came. Eventually, out of that two point something million, it was one point seven million there about that I gave that week. All through January, nothing came back. Home. Of course, God was, you know, supplying my food and all of the basic things I need. But you know, to have sown that kind of seed, that was like a few years ago when that was money. Now it's not money again. I thought that the heavens would tear open and it would just fall. Bam. I waited throughout January, nothing came. February, nothing came. Then in March, I was praying one day at our new site. And then the remaining $1,000 that I have saved and managed somewhere, in case there is famine in the land, I will lay hold of it. As I was praying that morning, you know God, God is wonderful. He knows, he knows when to come and meet you for what. I was praying that day and I was singing, I love you forever. I love you. What made me to sing that song? I don't know. But that day, the Holy Ghost came and said, Son, do you love me? I said, mm -mm, I know where you go. <laughs> don't go there. I know you. I know you by now. I know you. God doesn't ask you questions because he, he needs an answer. No. He said, Son, do you love me? I said, why, why are you going there again now? Say, give me that one thousand dollars. I say, Kai. Say, okay, I'll, I'll give you. You are God. Nobody can question you. Even if I grumble, I still love you. So, let's go. So I came back, to, and I was traveling that day. Flew to Abuja with no money. That was a song I was singing all through the plane. I was singing that song out of sorrow. <laughs> I was telling God, if anything happened, you have to appear here now. As soon as I arrived, they drove me to the hotel where I was going to lodge. The first person who came to greet me came with an envelope. He said, sir, this is my tithe. What was inside? $1,100. And instantly, the Holy Spirit spoke to me. He said, son, nobody gives more than me. The remaining part of the story is eventually it was so more dollars came in and then the next day, God, as I was praying, God said, take that money Go and meet so so man of God and give him. I said, Now, wow, God, this thing, what would they do if I tell people? It takes time. And so you need to be patient. Patience means having the right attitude when you are waiting. Some of you are waiting on the promises of God. You will need to you will need the wisdom of patience. Not everything happens automatically. Miracles are in different stages. The amount of time that an elephant will stay in the womb is different from the amount of time that a house fly will stay in the egg good so those of you that believe in god for mega size understand that it takes the principle of patience for it to come amen and this year this year god will raise people amongst us that will be giving in millions i love to give oh. I'm telling you for the gospel. I'm telling you. Millions. It's nothing. Some of you, that it, millions have become your idol. You, you never, never, I don't know when, maybe in heaven. Even in heaven, you may not give self. Some of you go and dig the ground. You look for axe and, and break the gold on the ground to bury. But God is causing an awakening. Amen. Finally, number six. The principle of submission. The principle of submission. It is the understanding of lordship plus stewardship that gives you the principle of submission. The understanding of lordship and stewardship. Lordship simply means 
understanding the truth that God is Lord over us in the kingdom. And for God to be Lord over us, or for God to be Lord over all, he must be Lord in every aspect. Someone once said, if God is not Lord over all, he is not Lord at all. It means wholesome submission of you and everything that concerns you to God. In James chapter 4, in verse 7, it says, submit to God. In verse 10, it says, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. Coming to that point of lordship, where God truly is the owner of everything that we have. As the owner, he can make demands at any time. As the owner, he can move you into seasons of consecrations as it suits his will. As the owner, you are always interested in his will concerning any situation, any matter. You wear or what people call open doors in line with his will. Because not every door open is an open door. If the gate of a prison is open, is that an open door? You say, God, thank you, but is this truly from you? Lordship. You want to experience rest roundabout. Rest roundabout is when, when God sits you down and he serves you, when he's working for you, when he brings you into prepared blessings, when what other people struggle for, it comes to you as though it was your right. Don't you look at the life of some people, some ministers. Every time they stand to minister, the unction just flows as if God is owing them. Many years ago, I went to, I, I traveled to minister with, you know, a minister. I went to play for him, play keyboard for him while he was preaching. And I saw the way he so flowed in the power of God, very easy. When we finished and we got home, after swallowing a heavy meal, he went to sleep. We slept in the same room. All through the night, I was there praying. He was sleeping. Then the little moment I went to sleep, I slept near him my eyes were open and I was having encounters so I woke up and looked at him he slept till morning I said now wow so people they wake up they owe like this me I've been here praying all through the night if you want to get to that point it doesn't mean you will be lazy it just means when God is truly Lord over your life he comes to defend everything that concerns you he makes your interest his interest. See the way the psalmist puts it. He said, Thou prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. It's more like, and remember, this is how the psalm starts. He said, The Lord. This is what it means here. That it's like God sits you down and he gathers all the good things he wants you to have. Your enemies are there. He puts it and then he stands and says, Come and touch him now if you get mine. You know, some of you, when your younger ones were small and little, when they asked you to feed them, you will eat half of the food. Is that true? Yes. <laughs> Lordship. Lordship and stewardship. Stewardship is now that you know he is Lord, then you receive wisdom from him in managing everything he gives you. In managing the finances in managing the influence in managing the authority even spiritual resources should be stewarded just because you have power available doesn't mean you do everything you want to do this is how you know stewardship if I'm anointed in the prophetic now and any time I can come and prophesy as I like stewardship is is God moving in that way now no then teach the word and sit down instead of trying to use what god has given me to create a reputation for myself you don't use god or his resources to create a name or a reputation for yourself no that's not kingdom mentality all of us are stewards the bible says in first corinthians 4 verse 1 it says let a man so account of us as stewards of the mysteries of god in verse 2 it says it is required of stewards that a man be found faithful 
You know, I was thinking of that word steward this afternoon. Steward is not a servant. He's higher than a servant. A servant only performs tasks given to him. A steward works with intelligence. Now that this has been given to me, how do I manage and multiply it so that it is at, in a, at a better form when the master comes? This is the principle of submission. When you understand lordship and stewardship. That is why I said that there are some things that you can, just because you have it now, does not mean you can afford it. In your dealings with God, is it time to buy a car? What did Elisha tell Gehazi? He said, is it time for clothes and raiments and all of these things? I know I need those things, but is this the time? See, many, very few Christians understand this one. Though. Not in our generation where it's now all about what you receive from God. So people now have been driven, and I say this with all sincere apology, but I don't want to be misunderstood. But a lot of people whom God has not called are raising up online prayer platform because they think it is lucrative. That move was started by God, but we have left it all. I hope you know. It's been corrupted already. Yes, sir. It's been corrupted. We are faced out of that move. It's just that anything that proceeds from God may keep working because it came from God. But you need to know when seasons have shifted. What God wanted it to do, it has done it. It has, it has been done. And so that's how you know when an anointing, when a revival has been corrupted, know that God has moved. He's no longer there. They have now turned a movement to a monument. Because when something stops moving and it was once celebrated, for it to maintain its relevance, you have to make it a monument. God told them in Acts chapter 1 that you will take this gospel and be witnesses for me in Jerusalem, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. But at chapter 6, they were still turned, they were still around Jerusalem celebrating the little thing when God had already moved. And guess what happened? They began to quarrel over food, quarrel over things. So it's still worship. You, you see, when you live like this, you will be strange to a normal Christian. Why doesn't he have a car now? Why doesn't a preacher said he gave God one million dollars as a single offering when he had no house of his own? What level of foolishness is that? To men, it is foolishness, but it is the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than the wisdom of men. You know, you know, the principle of submission, if you master it, eh? Nothing in this life can have dominion over you. Nothing. You can live in the midst of prosperity and it doesn't change you. It doesn't, it has corrupted a lot of people. Gold has become the God of many people. For some people, fame. For, to the extent that a man will go and sell his soul. You want to be free from that corruption like Peter said in 2 Peter chapter 1 that we have escaped the corruption of this world which is true is lost. Then you must engage the principle of submission. I quoted James chapter 4 in verse 10. It says, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God and he will exalt you. In verse 7 it says, submit to God, resist the devil and he will flee. So your authority against the devil is determined by the degree of your submission to God. That's why everybody can call the name of Jesus, but the response is different. Write this down. Honor is the seed for favor. Honor is the seed for favor. There's no way you try to talk about submission that you will escape the principle of honor. Honor. You submit to God because you honor him. Because you esteem his worth and his value to be above anything that you have or that you know. That becomes the seed for favor. The favor I'm talking about here is access. In Proverbs 16 verse 7, the Bible says, When a man's ways pleases the Lord, he makes even his enemies to be at peace with him. How can a man's ways please God when his ways are higher than our ways? Simple. Proverbs 3 verse 6. 
in all your ways acknowledge him that's when your ways will please him in all your ways means your decisions your method in arriving to things when you were in primary school you can guess the answer in mathematics and you pass when we enter secondary school they will give you another extra sheet they say show the work in there I remember the first time I wrote that exam, I started singing in the hall. I knew I was in trouble. So God is concerned about how you get there. Is it my method? Moses struck the rock twice. Water came out. There was result. But was it God's method? No. So you want to travel abroad now. And you see, be careful when a particular blessing from God obsesses you. Be careful. At that point, you are already a bait for compromise. Be careful. Be very careful. When you become too desperate about a blessing, you can't force God. You are not the one that will teach God that he needs to bless you. No. His purpose, part of it, is to show forth his glory through us. There's something he wants to manifest through your life. That's the reason why he will bless you. But your desp don't try to push God because you can't through your desperation. Most times it's when we become obsessed about a particular breakthrough in quote. That's when the devil takes advantage of us. So somebody is bringing what is going to compromise your faith. But you don't care. What you are interested in is the result. And then you stand and tell people that God did it. Meanwhile, God and the angels know that it was not through his method. All of these things are engaged under the principle of submission. So in submission, we honor God. Acknowledging him in all that we do and all that concerns us. And as we honor him, the Bible says he exalts us. When we submit to him, he gives us greater authority over the devil and over the situations of life and after god the next set of people you must honor and submit to his spiritual authority god has laid down scriptural chain of authority over the life of believers god is not a fool that he placed men to govern his affairs over your life god knows what he's doing that he plays the system or the structure of men and all that concerns you can i get another mic listen to this i'm closing with this you know do you know that there are certain liftings in life that doesn't come on an account of your dealings with God it doesn't come on account of your transaction with the realm of the spirit it comes on account of your alignment and submission to spiritual authority there are certain mandates that God may not place on your life if this part is missing in your life God himself said in 1st John that if you cannot love the man that you see, your brother that you see, don't claim to love God. God spoke to Paul, Jesus himself. Just tell him everything that you want him to know since you appear to him. He said, go into the city and you will be told what to do. Many believers have played with spiritual authority and this issue and their life now looks like a zigzag. Just when you are getting the graph correct, you begin to misbehave and fumble with the authority placement that God has kept over you. And then the graph begins to go. Listen, every man that God has called has a covenant with God to represent God and his interest in a particular, in a particular dimension. God will not need to call another person by himself to do that. All he will do is, this man, I will make a covenant with him and he will become a channel through which I will reveal this dimension of him. Then I will create other channels that will express this dimension in its brighter colors so long as they are submitted to him. 
So God calls you and he puts you under a teacher, under a mentor, under a pastor. And then they are covering over your life, supervises your growth in the spirit. Don't you ever think that a day will come where you become wiser than them. Authority in the spirit is not according to how much knowledge you have. The Bible says knowledge puffs up. It is love that edifies. God does not look at... The Bible says not many wise, noble, or rich are called. There are certain graces that will freely find expression in your life when your submission is complete. That's why, look at it now. The devil is trying to attack this principle in the church. We just finished the principle of abundance which is given. The devil has been attacking that for decades. The new one now is to attack all of these scandals and criticism online. I'm not going to say anything for or against it. But the target is not the men. The target is the fate of the people in the men. By the time you watch so much of everything, you begin to feel that there's nobody you can trust again. And that makes you a rebellion. The same qualified under the same standards like Lucifer. But a rebel, I mean to say. Yeah, because when you feel that you can't you can't be submissive to authority that God has placed over you, you don't want to be accountable to people. You feel that it downplays your Christianity, being open to people that God the Bible says they watch over your soul. Every time God will lift you, if your submission to the authority over you is correct, they will know there is a sign God will give them. I remember, sir, the testimony that woman shared, the politician in your church. I followed her testimony very well and as she heeded the voice that was over her, God took her and placed her where people lobby and bribe to be. Submission. The day I discovered this secret, I, I walk in stressless grace. If God say I should do something and my man of God say don't do it, I won't do it. Who will God punish? Not me. God will not punish him. God will rather go to him and discuss. That's what God did with Samuel. God had rejected Saul, but Samuel was still praying and interceding for him. God came to Samuel and said, Oga, why don't you forget about this man? Face another person here because if you keep staying on his issue, there's no way I can go and anoint that guy. Was it not Eliezer's submission to Abraham that brought the wife for Isaac? Abraham told him, don't allow my son to marry a woman from this land. He said, what if the woman refused to follow me? He said, don't you. He said, the God, the angel of the God that I have walked with will prosper you. Very powerful. In fact, you see, when a man walks with God and has earned certain levels of authority with God, you may not see that authority manifest by physical results around him but he has that authority and influence in the realm of the spirit. The price he had to pay, the things he had to suffer to get there, you don't, you don't have to do the same. By aligning and submitting to them, you walk into, Jesus said, I've called you to reap where you didn't sow. Are we ready to pray? It's called inheritance. It's a very legitimate way in the kingdom. There's no need for you to suffer and kill yourself and do what they did. You can't. You were not wired for it. Look at Isaac. Very smart man. He simply went and dug the wells of his father. If you gave water to my father, you will give water to me. Because I'm a deceit. The first time Hagar ran away from Sarah because she was maltreating him, the angel appeared to her and said, go back to your and be submissive there. That was the only way Ishmael can be part of the Abrahamic blessing. Submission. You want to experience rest roundabout? Understand and engage the principle of submission to God and then to the men that he has placed over you. It doesn't look like this will make sense. But in a world now that seems to be controlled by social media, be very careful of what you hear. Don't allow what you hear or what you watch reduce the honor that you place on the men that God has placed around you. My elder brother will always say that the God that we are seeing is you. So is you who will follow. 
I did, I, anytime he says it, sometimes I used to feel, ah, why is he saying, is he not idolatry? But I took time to meditate on what he said and I understood it. Every time the people complained against Moses, God was angry with them. Every time they did what Moses had said because God said it, God gave them miracles. And so God came to Joshua when he was about to enter the promised land. God said, all that I have said to my servant Moses do. Do you realize that the only thing that Joshua received was the spirit of wisdom? To obey everything that God had told Moses. There was no extra impartation. What God was simply saying is, everything I did with Moses, I can do with you so long as you heed him. Are we ready to pray? These are just six principles. Engage them this year and experience rest round about. There are more. In your walk with God this year, may the Holy Ghost help you to activate and to find the rest. Stand on your feet. We are going to pray. Lift your voice wherever you are and let's bless the name of the Lord. Lift your voice and bless Him. Lift your voice and bless Him. Thank Him for what you have heard. Thank Him because your mind has been renewed. Thank Him because stubborn mindset has been broken. For the correction that the word brings. Instruction in righteousness. Thank him for what you have learned. You know that the key that you have received. Is going to open multiple doors for you. For the way of a God. Is the way of wisdom. I choose the way of the Lord For the way of the Lord Is the way of wisdom I choose the way of the Lord Sing for the way in Hebrews chapter 4 I believe in verse 6 thereabout he said today while you hear his voice do not harden your heart it is the hardness of heart that stops men from being obedient to the word that God has spoken today you have heard God's word God is giving us keys by which we can activate heaven on earth God is giving you keys that in compliance with these things that you are taught, don't try to change the equation. Just do as you are taught. He said, then you shall make your ways prosperous and you shall have good success. I want you to cry in the next two minutes. Oh God, I receive grace for obedience. I don't know if there's anything like that, but the grace that will compel me to be compliant with this word that I've received, I receive that grace. The grace that will overrule on a stubborn mindset. Some of us are hindered by the things that we knew in the past. But today, if you will hear his voice, lift your voice in two minutes. Lift your voice in two minutes and cry to him. Parate <laughs> 
Sabre que te barroco se te bre que te va la grade. Shekre te paracatos ya cata. The grace to be compliant. To work in obedience in keeping with this principle. Keys that you have been given. To leave heaven on earth. The grace that I will experience rest round about. As I practice, as I walk in obedience to the things that I've been taught. Hey, Kapariata Kosodorokoya. Shekele Paragadia la Taparaga Palagere Koso. Sebra Kataparaga de Le Prokoto. Eke Parokotolia Paragade Sike Pragada. Sheke Pragata Paragatoya Kai. Hallelujah. Listen. I'm going to lead us to pray one more prayer and I'll take an altar call. Listen to this. Many of us, the things that God has told us to do, instructions that the Lord has given to us, teachings that you have heard, that you refuse to apply for whatever reason. Some of us, because of this, we have exchanged certain seasons. The place where you ought to be in God's plan, you are not there. You are still years behind. God wants to show mercy today. Here is the prayer. Father, every principle that I've disobeyed in the past, every word that I've been rebellious towards in the past, that has denied me of my place in you, I repent and ask for mercy. Oh God, restore those seasons again. Restore those seasons again. If you sent the word before and I didn't comply with it, I ask for mercy. Send that word again. I'm ready to do your word. Jesus said, Lo, I come in the volume of the books that is written of me to do your will. Oh God, lift your voice and pray. Se brekete le brakata la brakata la gabriatoya. Ask him for mercy. And through his mercy, let those seasons be restored again. What was lost be restored again. Saka brate kreto koprosi atala. Jikroto brala hate la habasia. For some of you in your finances. For some of you in ministry, things that the Lord asks you to do, places He asks you to go to, people He asks you to meet, and because of that, certain things that were yours have been denied you. But God wants to show you mercy tonight. I live for Jesus day after day. I live for Jesus. Yes, come one day. The Holy Spirit, I will obey. I live for Jesus day after day. Ask Him for mercy tonight. He's restoring you again. Is restoring the years that was lost, the years that were stolen through disobedience, through failure to comply with His word. Hallelujah. Are we blessed tonight? Return back to the words that God gave you. There are seasons that we have missed. There are inheritances that we have traded. There are some of us that where you are is not where you ought to be. 
You can keep going around in cycles and think you are making progress. That's not progress. You are just going around in cycles. But God is looking for a people that are willing to be obedient. For some of you, the prayer method God gave you before, go back to it. When you prayed like that, you used to have encounters every night. The Lord will appear to you and give you messages, even for people. But now it seems like everything is dry. Every spiritual operation is hinged upon the principle. Go back and apply the principles. Because they refused to obey, they didn't enter into his rest. Imagine if the widow had disobeyed Elijah. Go and make for me first. If she had disobeyed because of any sentiment, you know if it is on our day, the, the widow would have took it, taken him on social media. What kind of a man of God is this? Nigerian pastors too like money. The only money I have, you say I should bring it. I was in Reverend's church and he told them that on New Year Day they were fasting. I said, this one is strong. Oh. But you know, somebody can disobey and say, ah, after all, it's one day. And the person has traded everything that God has prepared this year. But God will grant us grace. Now I want to pray for you. Lift your hands. Let's start from there. Anyone who has lost any season, anything that God had sent to you in the past that you lost or that escaped you because of disobedience or because you slow you 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 were we were late in complying with what God gave you by the principle and the mystery of God's mercy I declare restoration over your life because of what you have heard tonight and the attitude that you have taken to obey may God restore everything that was stolen may God restore everything that has escaped you in the name of Jesus Christ I'm hearing in my spirit God is saying he will restore your place in destiny he will restore your place in the spirit he will restore your place in his kingdom he will restore your place in his house Receive it in the name of Jesus. I want to pray for you. As you go to practice these principles, every aspect of your life that has not experienced abundance, I veto on every natural limitation by the power of the word of God. And I declare that henceforth to the end of this year, experience supernatural abundance. I don't care the economy in the nation where you are. Experience supernatural abundance. May my God bring you into a season of abundance. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lack in any form, in any form whatsoever. From today, it ceases to exist in your life. And I pray for you. May God give you a passion and a heart to put to practice the word that he has given to you. To put to practice everything that you have been taught. Listen, in Isaiah 30 verse 20, 20 and 21, he said, though the Lord gives you the water of adversity and the bread of affliction, he said, yet your teachers will not be removed from your sight. He said, but your eyes will see your teachers. And your ears will hear a word behind you saying, this is the way, walk in it. The reason why God keeps your teachers in the midst of famine, the reason why God keeps the ministry of the word around you in the midst of turbulent situation is because if you do as you are told, you will be able to turn that situation into what God desires for you. I pray for you in the name of Jesus. The passion to put to practice God's word, the grace for obedience, and compliance to every divine principle receive it in the name of Jesus you will find it easy to obey God this year and in addition to that I activate your spiritual senses to hear God this year anyone whose eyes have been blind spiritually the Lord anoints that eyes now. Let them be open to see. Let your ears be open to hear. 
let your understanding be opened in this season in the name of Jesus Christ go forth and prosper go forth and experience rest round about may your life please God this year in Jesus mighty name we pray are you blessed tonight and shortly before we leave I want to make an altar call while we are all standing inside and outside this is the part of the service where it is based on an individual decision if you are here and you know that Jesus is not Lord and Savior of your life doesn't matter whether you came from a Christian home or whether you were born in a church if you have never made publicly a decision for Jesus or you are here and perhaps you have been convicted by the message tonight and you feel like you want to surrender afresh to God or you are here and you are living a life of disobedience or rebellion towards God in some aspects of your life I want to give you an opportunity to return back to Jesus wherever you are with your hand on your chest I want you to pray this prayer after me say Lord Jesus I come to you today I surrender to you I believe that you died and rose again for my salvation. I receive you into my heart. I confess you as my Lord and Savior. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, if you know you made that prayer, please raise your right hand up. Let me see you wherever you are. Check if they are outside. God bless you. I see, I see those hands. God bless you. If your hands are up, please come to the front quickly. I want to pray for you. Whether you are inside or outside, if your hands are up, please come to the front quickly. I want to pray for you. I live for Jesus day after day. Keep celebrating God for souls. I live for Jesus. Yes, come with me. The Holy Spirit, I will obey. I live for Jesus day after day. Stretch your hands towards them. Those of you in front, I want to pray for you. You have made the most noble decision in your life everything has changed everything has changed every past that you knew before now just fell like a pack of cards god wants to begin a new walk with you father i pray for these ones in the name of jesus we declare that their sins are forgiven by the authority of your word we declare that they are born again and we ask from today that your spirit will come and live and dwell in them restore lost fire lost hunger lost passion for you rekindle your fire in their hearts let them burn for you every day and let them serve you for the rest of their life i rebuke the power of satan over you i rebuke the power of sin addiction every stronghold of the enemy is broken off your life Receive the grace to live for Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And amen. Amen. What's your name, my dear? Huh? Rita. God. God is about to reposition you. Are you hearing me spiritually? There's a grace for speed that will come upon your life. I want you to mean business with God. God wants to take you farther than you can imagine. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes, sir. There's an anointing. Lift your hands. Let me pray for you. Father, let that grace rest upon her. The anointing for this next season be released. You'll be a sign and a wonder. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. God bless you for this wonderful decision. Please just turn to your left. There's somebody waving his hand. Just turn to your left and walk straight to that person. Our counselors want to have a word with you before you go. Celebrate them as they go. God bless you.
I said clap for souls, pneumatic. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you blessed tonight? I like that vuvuzela. Uh, vuvu, what you call it? Vuvuzela. Uh -huh. Give the Lord a big shout of praise. <laughs> Hallelujah. We are going now, but listen. Um, let me suspend what we'll have done now for miracle service. Um, miracle service in the month of March will be on the third of March. Okay? That's like two Sundays from now. Now, please listen to this announcement. It's going to hold here. Okay? Good. So, those of you with due respect that like sleeping over announcement, or you don't tell any other person, please go and tell your friends that didn't come today. Miracle service next month will be here. We'll keep announcing it till the last Sunday before miracle service. I sense a very strong release of the power of God for deliverance. Are you hearing me? And God told me this morning that everything that was exchanged from your life, this is the year whereby the mystery of restoration, it is returning back. Huh? You know, the, the principle of exchange is what God used for us to become born again. Satan knows how to deploy that, that law, that principle. Whatever was exchanged, your, ash, your beauty was taken for ashes. God will give you beauty for ashes. Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And of, of course, we are going to pray on prayer requests and also take time to pray for families. And we trust God for an awesome time in his presence. Your week is blessed in the name of Jesus. The best part of February is what you will experience this week. May the hand of God be upon you for good. As you move around your daily businesses and routines, I declare that you are immune to evil. Every situation orchestrated by hell to cause you shame and disgrace and reproach, let God turn it around for your glory and for your lifting. Every conspiracy against you is thwarted and destroyed. In the name of Jesus, it is well with you. In Jesus' precious name, surely his goodness. Ever. Amen. Listen, um, next week we are still here again. Say amen to that. How many of you really, really love and honor the presence of God's servant in our midst? Let's do it better for him. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much. Amen. Amen. On behalf of Pneumatech, we are sending our greeting, our love to Gateway Christian Center in Gombe. Let them know we have, they have another family here. Thank you so much, sir, for being with us. God bless you. Thank you very much. Please make sure you shake the hands of one or two persons around you before you go. God bless you.